If you really want the Holy Spirit to rest in this place, I dare you just rest on your feet and open up your mouth and worship the God of your salvation. Don't let it just have been a sermonic solo, but let that be your confession today. Come on, Father, we ask, we ask of your presence to rest in this place. We give you glory, we give you glory. Come on, I need, I need some spirit-filled believers to worship the King of Kings. To worship the Lord of Lords. Come on. He's holy. He's excellent. He's magnificent. today because you have the Holy Ghost the Bible tells us that we can call those things that be not as though they already were so perhaps there's somebody that's facing an impossible situation right now 
For the next few moments, I'm not going to tell you what to say. I'm not going to tell you what to pray. But I want you to pray that every need that the hand that you're holding will be supplied by the time they leave the council. By the time they get home from the council, every sickness in their body is healed. Every stronghold on their mind is broken. Every fetter and shackle that's on their feet will be loosed by the time they leave this council. One, two, three, open up your mouth and begin to travail right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, firstly, we thank you because we know that you're able. We know that you're able to do exceeding and abundantly. Above all, we can ask for things. And so, God, as I touch on the group with the hand of the Holy, I release fresh anointing. I release fresh healing. I release a fresh touch. I release virtue into them right now. Every stronghold be broken. Every adversary be chasing out of here. We give you the glory. We declare that the way is already made. We declare that the door is already open. That the stronghold is already cast out. And we release favor. We release strength. We release the demonstration. Right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. And it shall be well. Well in my house. Well in my family. Well in my health. Well in my body. Well in my mind. Well in my ministry. In Jesus' name, if you believe in those stones, hands and give the promise. I've asked somebody to tell today is our day. Today is our day. Whatever we need, God's going to do it today. To the tell three people today is the day. Today is the day for my miracle, for my turnaround today. Yeah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in the bone room. I guess somebody to catch it today. Oh. And I feel the Lord in this place. Confess to one person, and we're going to the word. Tell a neighbor, whatever you need from God is coming to you today. I wish I had the right person that believes that. I mean, whatever that need is, he said, My God shall supply. Praise the Lord to everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We honor the Lord for his presence that we feel in this place today. And certainly for his traveling mercies here to the greater, to the amazing, the greater Pennsylvania State Council. Haven't we been enjoying ourselves this week, those of us who have been here throughout the week? Haven't the Lord met us this week? Amen. Certainly we honor, amen, the illustrious Bishop and Diocesan of this great council, his grace, his eminence. One of the greatest preachers to ever walk the planet and one of the greatest leaders that God has ever raised up in the person of Bishop Ronald Young. Let's celebrate him and in his absence and to Lady Rose Young. Let's thank God for them. And certainly to the entire cabinet of leadership, to the council chairman, Bishop Yancey, we thank God for you, sir. Amen. Let's celebrate all of our leadership in their respective places. And to my friend, your great state youth president, who has been warm in hospitality with us this weekend, Minister Austin Woodland. We thank God for you, sir. And to his entire team, Mr. Omar, my brother and friend, we thank God for each of you. I know you're tired. You've been in the council all weekend. You're ready to go home and prepare your Sunday school lesson. So I'm not going to be here all day. Is that all right? I know I'm a stranger to some, but please don't audition me too long. Let's have a little bit of church on the Saturday afternoon. Is that all right? I am family. Don't worry about it. Amen. Oh, certainly, we must honor our IPYPU Chair Lady President. We thank God for our big sister and friend, Evangelist Frida Morrison. Amen. And I must just put a plug in that y'all are coming to my neck of the woods in just a few weeks to the International Summer Convention. And so we're just going to get a taste of what happens when Ohio and Pennsylvania come together today. Amen. And we'll pick up where we left off in August. Amen. If you have your Bibles, would you join me in 2 Samuel, the 15th chapter? 2 Samuel, the 15th chapter. For those who 
those who were here last night, I'll try to pick up the anointing of Bishop Austin. And I don't know if I can be as legendary as 15 minutes, but I'll, I'll pick up on the last 15 that he did not use last night. Amen. But if you pray for me and help me preach, I believe we may get on out of here quicker than normal. Second Samuel, the 15th chapter, since some of us are standing, let's all do that in unity this afternoon in reverence of the word of God. And, and if you could, just put your finger on Psalm, the 41st chapter, for we'll consider that as well tonight. We have Second Samuel 15, we're going to the 25th verse, when you have it, say amen. If you don't say, wait up, wait up. At 2 Samuel, the 15th chapter and the 21st, excuse me, 25th verse reads on this wise. And the king said unto Zadok, carry back the ark of God into the city. If I shall find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me again and show me both it and his habitation. But if he thus say, I have no delight in thee, behold, here am I. Let him do to me as seemeth good unto him. Would you go with me very quickly to Psalm the 41st chapter? Psalm 41. Psalm 41. They told me the theme of the council was more than conquerors. And I saw on the program that this service in particular, they're telling us a guaranteed win. Am I in the right house? Am I in the right paper? Well, I need the winners to get happy here. Where are, the, where, are the, where are the winners at? Where are the, the champions, the praisers that, that believe you have the victory? Once you get Psalm, say amen when you have Psalm 41. Psalm 41, we're going to verse number two. I want you to read this to me instead of me reading it to you. When you have it, what does it say? Stop right there. It says, the Lord will preserve him. What else? And keep him alive. Somebody should have got excited right there. Because you've been dealing with a situation that tried to take your life. But I need you to read that first clause one more time. It says, what does it say? The Lord will preserve, we'll preserve him. and what? Uh-huh. What does the rest say? Tell somebody a blessing is coming. What does the rest say? The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. If you would pray with me just for a few moments, I would like to preach from these words, a knockout in the first round. A knockout in the first round. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. A knockout in the first round. Here in our text this afternoon, particularly in the 41st chapter of Psalm, we find David as he is reflecting and considering the keeping power of God. Many of us, we've read the life of David as means of inspiration. We've read it as means of meditation. We've read it as means of devotion. However, uh, it is imperative, it is important that we really observe the fullness of David's sentiments beyond the songs that he writes in the book of Psalm, for he is recalling a particular time in his life. He's rather, if you would say, he's having testimony service. I can imagine him on a Sunday night at one of our churches saying, first giving honor to God, who is the head of my life. Thanking God for the pastor, for the first lady, for the saints and friends. I just want to tell you how God brought me out. It would be most adequate to conclude that David is considering these events here in the second Samuel 5th chapter, chapter 15 of the book of second Samuel for we see here that in this 15th chapter, David is facing great and grave opposition against his son Absalom. The Bible tells us that Absalom, after being in the backside of Jerusalem a few years, he seeks to capture the throne of his father David. Well, take note here that he had not seen David. He had not seen the advancement of the kingdom of Israel. He had not seen the face of David or nor heard his voice in some time. Perhaps he uh, had not seen the productivity of David as a king. However, this Absalom aims to pursue rulership. And so Absalom sends for a man by the name of Joab. 
Be mindful of that name, Joab. For we see that after several times, Joab was pursued by Absalom with no response. We find that he could not get a hold of Joab. Joab wouldn't return his phone calls. We thought he would be at church. We thought he would be at the council. But Joab didn't show up. Maybe he left early. Maybe he didn't want to stay for Saturday afternoon service. But he could not get a hold of Joab. So uh, the Bible says that Absalom sings for Joab's field to be kept caught on fire. And Joab finally responds to Absalom and sees that uh, he is needed to be an accomplice to murder. He is needed to be uh, an accessory to the death and the demise of David. It is interesting here that we find the significance because Absalom resembles a lot of the enemies that many of us face even right now. Because we see that those have grown in the grace of God. We have learned the knowledge of God. We have served the Lord. We've seen God perform in our lives, perform in our churches, perform even beyond the council. But now the enemy, uh, he's trying to do his best to gain access to us from alternative areas. How many can testify today that, uh, yes, I've been delivered from that situation, but I didn't see the devil coming from that area. I don't see how in the world the enemy uh, would have even got a hold of my attention. I thought I had overcome that stronghold. I thought I was more than a conqueror. Yet somehow the enemy, he found those scenic routes. He found those alternative methods. He found those hidden agendas and hidden areas to get a hold of my life. Certain situations we think that we get victory over. He utilizes that one thing. He utilizes that one Joab. He utilizes that one relationship, uh, if you will, to get direct access to our emotions because he knows if he can get a hold of our emotions, child of God, he can hinder us from praising God in the fullness that we should. He knows that if he can get us sad, get us discouraged, if he can get us uh, depressed, he knows that he can abort the power of the praise that's on the inside of us. But I just pray that I drove seven hours this weekend to, to find some praises in here that understand that God is greater than this enemy that I'm facing. God is greater than this adversary. God is greater not only than the adversary, but every device that the adversary tries to use against me. And so we must understand that even though we are filled with the Holy Ghost, even though we have been down in Jesus' name, as gifted as we are, you're not too gifted to be distracted. You're not too gifted to be uh, attacked. You're not too gifted to be troubled on every side. In fact, I'm of the persuasion that the more gifted that you become, the more attack that is destined for your life. Oh, but I'm so glad today that I have a hope from the words of Paul. He says that for I reckon the sufferings of this present time, I wish I had a church here, are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. He'll use abstract things to break us. He'll bring up old strongholds. He'll bring up old relationships. He'll bring up old imperfections and old insecurities that God brought you out of uh, and try to tell you that there's that this, that, and so forth, that they're still holding that against you. But I'm so glad that whoever it is that holds things against me, they have no power to save me. They have no power uh, to rebuke me. They have no power to cast me out or even to bring me in. But the only one that has the power to save or to depart from me is the God of my salvation. And because he is the only power, I have all confidence that he which hath begun a good work on the inside of me, he shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. I need to just check the scene and make sure I'm in the right council. Is there anybody that can get excited this afternoon? Uh, because God has a plan for your life and the plan is greater than the plot of the adversary. The plan of God for your life is greater uh, than the plot of Satan because Satan comes uh, to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life. I must clarify for you, he did not just come down into the earth, but rather he said, I came even into you. I came down to save you from sin. I came and when I filled you with my spirit, I gave you the ability to have a life and that more abundantly. I need somebody that, that'll just help me give God glory because even when the devil said that you would die in the destruction of your decisions, God said, I'm going to allow you to live to see the breakthrough that I have for you. Can I get you to jump on your feet and show the devil that you've been fighting all the way to the council that I shall live and not die? Oh yes, I don't need 
having to respect for the axes, but I need you to stand just so that the devil will recognize who he can't kill now. So that the devil can recognize who has the victory. So the devil can recognize that I have power with God. I need you to clap those hands and shout hallelujah. If you believe it, somebody shout glory one more time. Oh yes, and so I start to feel sorry for the devil, Madam President, uh, because he often, he often tries to attack us. He often tries to accuse us. He often tries to take us down. Uh, but somehow he should remember by now uh, that after all of this time, he is defeated. Uh, isn't it interesting? He's a defeated foe. He was defeated from the very beginning. For I heard the book of Revelation say, now has come power and strength and uh, the, the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of the brethren has been cast down and, and you know what the rest says that they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony so all the way from the very beginning of the fall of satan he has been fighting a battle that he's already lost and so if he cannot seem to get over that you have an advantage yeah? uh, because you have the power to say uh, that i once was lost lord have mercy but now i'm found i, I once was blind but now i see you have the advantage yeah? because you can say i was a wretch undone but god committed his love toward us yeah? in that while i was yet sinner yeah? christ died for me yeah? you have an advantage over the enemy yeah? because even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death yeah? you don't have to fear evil yeah? because jesus has come yeah? and he's come to stay yeah? i need you to grab a neighbor by the hand and tell a neighbor yeah? you have no reason to fear yeah? uh, because the devil has already lost the battle yeah? for your mind the devil yeah? has already lost the battle for your body the devil has already lost the battle yeah? for your ministry you shall be anointed yeah? to carry out the purpose god has for you yeah? so don't even take light yeah? or consideration of the diagnosis on your body yeah? don't even consideration yeah, of the drama in your family. Yeah. No weapon that is formed against you. Yeah. Well, I wish I had a church here. Yeah. They shall not be able to prosper. Yeah. And everything that rises up against you in judgment, yeah, God says you have the power to contend. Yeah. I need mean, somebody with some power to open up your mouth yeah, and give God praise right now. Yeah. Uh, somebody shout power yeah. Somebody shout power It's so here yeah. I'm so glad tonight that even though the devil tries his best yeah, You are not subscribed to your past yeah. I need you to help me preach and tell somebody that yeah. Tell them you are not yeah, subscribed to your past yeah. Lord you don't believe it, you ain't even tell them yeah. I said tell a neighbor real quick yeah. Tell them you are not yeah, subscribed to your past yeah. Hallelujah to God but rather, yeah, I hear the voice of Jesus where he says, yeah, Behold, Simon, Satan hath desired to have you, yeah, that he may sift you as wheat. Yeah. Oh, but thank God he goes on to say, I have prayed for you, yeah, that your faith fail not. Yeah, and when thou art converted, yeah, when you have come to yourself, when you've got an understanding, yeah, when you have got convicted, when you've been down yeah, in the water, when you've been filled yeah, with his Holy Ghost power, yeah, you have the ability yeah, to strengthen the brethren. Yeah, I need somebody that's been converted. Yeah, do me a favor and go grab somebody yeah, and tell them because I have the victory. Yeah, you have the victory. Yeah, I need about 10 victorious saints yeah, to jump on your feet one more time yeah, and give God a triumphant shout. Yeah, clap those hands on oh, you people. Yeah, shout out to God yeah, with the voice of triumph. Yeah, uh, because, because, yeah, you are a winner. Yeah, you are more than a conqueror. Yeah, and so I must hasten here and let you know how imperative it is yeah, uh, for us to avoid the risk of those, yeah, even on our road to our kingdom placement. Yeah, because we find that David was anointed a long time ago. Yeah, but he's sitting in this seat of kingdom authority. Yeah, you got to beware of those yeah, who have hidden agendas. Yeah, I wish I could preach here all night. Yeah, uh, we got to beware of those who. Yeah, they came in your life. Yeah, you thought they were a permanent relationship. Yeah, but they're just a seasonal lesson. Yeah, you got to beware of folk yeah, who came to interfere. Yeah, and sometimes often we find 
happy yeah, that your primary interference yeah, was your greatest influence. Yeah, you gotta be careful of those yeah, who come and say that I want you to win. Yeah, but as soon as God starts taking you higher, yeah, as soon as God starts opening doors, yeah, now they get that funny look on their face. Yeah, now they get that funny tone about their voice. Yeah, and now they don't want to pray for you when you win. Yeah, oh, but I don't need somebody yeah, to be there to just tell me how good I am. Yeah, I need somebody yeah, that said I'm covering you yeah, from every dark of the atmosphere. Yeah, sings your way. Yeah, I'm bleeding the blood yeah, that every attack on your life yeah, would be broken yeah, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I'm covering you yeah, to say that God will perfect that yeah, which concerns you. Yeah, you've got to beware of those dogs yeah, because the Bible tells us here that Absalom yeah, he initially comes into the presence of David yeah, and he gives him a kiss. Yeah, oh, that sounds so familiar. Yeah, I find it so often in the scripture yeah, that often when the man kisses somebody, yeah, it's often because there's a plot for their demise. Yeah, you look up here, Judas. Yeah, he kissed him yeah, and traded him for 30 pieces of silver. Yeah, you got to be careful that the person kissing you yeah, ain't the person trying to kill you. Yeah, Lord, I wish I could preach here in Pennsylvania. Yeah, you got to be careful yeah, that the one that is getting up close to you yeah, ain't the one trying to conquer you. Yeah, oh, but God told me to tell you yeah, that I have already put my stamp of approval yeah, on your life. Yeah, so they cannot replace you. Yeah, they cannot replace what I put in you. Yeah, because I'm going to let you live yeah, until everything I need out of you is accomplished yeah, in the earth that you live in. Yeah, I need mean, somebody to lift those hands yeah, and say, Lord, I thank you yeah, uh, for letting me live long enough yeah, uh, to overcome my enemies. Yeah, I thank you for letting me live yeah, long enough for me yeah, to outlive Absalom. Yeah, I may go into a hiding place. Yeah, I may go into a cave. I may yeah, go into a secret chamber. Yeah, oh, but you already told me yeah, that he that dwelleth yeah, in the secret place yeah, of the most high shall abide yeah, under the shadow of the Almighty. Yeah, I will say of the Lord yeah, that he is my refuge, yeah, my fortress. Yeah, can I preach the Bible here? Yeah, my God in him will I trust. Yeah, I need somebody that trusts God today yeah, to bring you Satan to the manifested word for your life. Yeah, to give God a praise yeah, that I interrupt every part of the adversary. Yeah, for he that shall come, yeah, he will come yeah, and shall not tarry. Yeah, clap those hands everywhere yeah, and shout yes Lord. Somebody shout a yes, Lord. And so can you make it through the fire with me? You're not ratting me out to my adversary, are you? But can you make it through the pain and the process of purpose? Can you make it to the I can testify it does not appear where we shall be. Can you make it through that process in time where I am in suffering, but I know the next place is my reign. Can you make it as Joseph said through the pit yeah, get me through the prison yeah, and get me to the palace yeah. if you can't make it with me there yeah, I challenge my young people yeah, and even some of the older senior saints yeah, that may be around the wrong people yeah, by the time you get home from the council yeah, it's time to cut some folk off yeah. Lord y'all don't believe it you thought yeah, that you did that in the beginning of every year yeah. but God says at this half point yeah, of the year that we're in now yeah, it's time to delete some folk yeah, off of Facebook, yeah, delete some folk out of your contact list, yeah, delete the folk you follow on Instagram, yeah, and it's time for you yeah, to replace that yeah, with praise, yeah, replace that yeah, with a greater hunger for God. Yeah, I've come to the realization yeah, that it's more beneficial yeah, uh, to reciprocate yeah, the favor of God yeah, and eliminate the folk yeah, that don't mean me no good. Yeah, it may it's less time consuming yeah, to replace the time that I spend yeah, worrying about folks' perception yeah, and worrying about God's will for my life. Yeah, I need somebody in here yeah, that says I am concerned yeah, for God's will for my life. Yeah, to get open, yeah, open up your mouth, yeah, give God a worship yeah, that I tell God I 
I'm hungry and desperate for your presence. Matter of fact, I need you to do something you've never done before. If you're so complacent and used to, just lift in your hands. If you got to get up out of your seat, if you got to get into the aisle, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to give God an unconventional praise in the ballroom this afternoon. When I count to three, I want you to praise God in process for every adversary you're fighting. I want you to get out of your comfort zone and give God glory. One, two, three. Give God an unconventional pride. Lord, that's too normal. That's too peculiar. That's too normal. I need a peculiar praise. I need an unheard of praise. I need a different shout. You gave God that praise last week. You gave God that hallelujah last time. So it's time for God to do a new thing. Well, shall it spring forth? Well, I'm going to give you 10 more seconds. Well, open up your mouth and magnify God. Yeah, yeah. Well, I hear the Lord saying, yeah, when you give me an unconventional praise, yeah, I'm going to give you an unconventional miracle. Yeah, I need you to grab a praise by the hand yeah, and tell a neighbor, yeah, God is about to turn some things around yeah, because you made the decision to praise him yeah, uh, beyond normal. Yeah, God's going to work some things out in your family yeah, because you made the decision to praise him yeah, beyond the ordinary. Yeah, because ordinary praises yeah, keep you in the same place. Yeah. Oh, but our extraordinary praises yeah. give you an extraordinary miracle. Yeah. For I heard him say now unto him yeah. who was able to do exceeding yeah. and abundantly above all yeah. that you may be able to ask or think yeah. according to the power that worketh on the inside of us. Yeah. And I get happy here yeah. because the Bible does not say yeah. that he'll give us exceeding yeah. and abundant. Yeah. Oh, but the scripture says he'll give us exceedingly abundant. Yeah. In other words, the Bible's telling us yeah, that whatever God has already provided, yeah, he's going to exceed that. Yeah. He's going to go beyond that. Yeah. For I heard him say with the enemy, yeah, shall I come in like a flood. Yeah. The spirit of the Lord yeah, shall raise up a standard against it. Yeah. That does not just mean a defense, yeah, but that tells me that when the enemy sends a precedent, yeah, when the enemy sends that's a level. Yeah. God is going to exceed that level. Yeah. God's going to set a precedent yeah. that's higher than that. Yeah. Because I heard yeah. him say that eyes have not seen, yeah. ears have not heard, yeah. neither has it entered yeah. into the hearts of men. Yeah. The things that God has in store. Yeah. I wonder if there's anybody in Pennsylvania yeah. as I get ready to go back home yeah. that I give God glory. Yeah. Or because God God's about to do something yeah, that you could not even imagine. Yeah. God's about to do something yeah, that you've been praying about yeah, night after night, yeah, shedding tear after tear. Yeah. But God is saying, I see your tears yeah, and I remember your prayer. Yeah. But I'm about to do something yeah, so crazy. Yeah. You didn't even pray for that one. Yeah. Yes, I saved your children. Yeah. Oh, but I saved your cousins too. Yeah. Lord, yes, I heal your body. Yeah. Oh, but I take your off that medicine too. Yeah. Yes, I'll come up in your ministry. Yeah. Oh, but I'll give you a new book to write too. Yeah. I need somebody yeah, to open up your mouth yeah, and praise God for the abnormal blessing yeah, that's coming to your situation. Yeah. Give God a praise yeah, that's for an abnormal miracle. Yeah, yeah. I found somebody yeah. I tell them God's going to do it yeah. oh, Y'all don't want to help me preach I'm tired yeah. I promise you if you help me preach We'll get something to eat in a minute yeah. oh, But I found somebody yeah. I tell them God's going to do it yeah. For I heard the writer say yeah. It won't always be like this yeah. I wish I could have some church here yeah. The Lord will perfect yeah. That concerning me yeah. Sooner than later yeah. I think I'm ready to have church now yeah. It's going to work in your favor. I need you to turn around one time. 
If you're ready for God to turn some things around for your good, y'all ain't moving. I mean, everybody in the church that need God to turn some things by the time you get home from the council, they'll just turn around one time. But God's saying, I'm turning your morning into dancing. I'm turning your sorrow into joy. I'm turning your weeping into worship. For weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. And the Bible says that Absalom. He sends him the spies him, to go forth him, and pursue David. Him. But what Absalom him, did not know him, is that David him, had the ark him, of the covenant. Him. He had the presence him, of God. Him. He had the glory him, of God. Him. He had the power him, of God. Him. The Lord sent me him, to Harrisburg him, to tell the praises that the only way that you make it out of where the devil stands is if you praise him and get in the glory. Get in the glory. Get in the hell. Got to catch it yet. Get in the glory. I wonder if there's 30 people in the ballroom that get out of your seat. Get in the aisles and get in the glory. When I count to three, help, get out help, of that row help, and place this glory help, in the glory. Help. One, help, two, help, three, help. get out of your seat. Go for the glory. Go for the glory. Help. Go for the glory. Because if you go for it, help, the Lord said, help, you're about help, to knock out help, the enemy help, in the first round. Help. Yeah, the Bible. 
Bible says that Absalom finally dies. But the Bible tells us that Absalom, he dies at the hand of Joab. That same Joab that he tried to use as an accessory to David's murder is the same Joab that kills the adversary. I need you to grab hands across this church. We done here. I want you to tell the hand that you're holding. Tell the neighbor, if I were you, I would give God glory because this time, next council, God's going to use what the devil meant for evil and turn it around for your good. God's going to use what the devil tries as an accessory to give God the glory. I need you to tap in to whatever opposition the hand that you're holding is going through. And for the next 60 seconds, praise God until with one person, both hands with one person. Because some of you in this room are saying, I'm used to church. I'm used to councils. I'm used to state meetings. But I'm, with, I'm fighting an adversary that is bigger than me. Perhaps somebody saying like David, this adversary is in my own family. After my own kind. I've been praying for them and encouraging them. Yet they want to see me fall. They're doing everything it takes for me to lose my mind. For the next few moments, I want you to intercede on that hand that you're holding. Until you knock out that adversary they're fighting. I want you to pray for that hand that you're holding until you completely terminate that enemy for good. That sickness that's been in their body for longer than it should have been. That oppression that's been on their mind, it's time to knock it out. That depression that they've been fighting, those thoughts of suicide, 
those thoughts of leaving them out of here. God is saying it's time to knock it out. Open up your mouth and travail. Now go. Okay. 
from this great council. You are more than a conqueror, but the greatest way to knock that adversary out is to go down in Jesus' name. The greatest way you can defeat the enemy of your soul is for God to fill you with heaven's most precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Is there one in the room? I don't never want to leave this moment without giving somebody a chance. Is there one? has not been water baptized in Jesus' name. I need the saints to be praying. There may be one in the room that has not been down in Jesus' name. Is there one that has not been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost? This moment is open for you right now. 